Hey everybody, welcome back to Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal Slowbeef. With me, of course, my good friend Devious Vacuum. Finger guns. My good friend Poahoko. <laughs> good evening. My good friend Turbo C. Hello. My good friend Jim. Howdy, folks. And we're back with Dream Daddy. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, what? What? What fucking happened? What did we even read? What did we do? We fell in love with Craig. Oh. Craig happened. All three Craig dates. Yes. When we last left our heroes, uh, we had just created our dad book profile, and after you create your dad book profile, you just click on a dad, and you can date that dad. So, we should probably talk about some of those questions on the dad book profile. Oh, right. Because they are, they are pretty good. Oh, well, mostly <laughs> the answers. All the answers are so good. I don't think it matters. Like, the guides that we looked at had, like, recommended things, but, like, I, I honestly don't think it means anything. Yeah, all the guides are sort of like, they're like, we don't know if this works, but here we go. Yeah, some of the guides that I looked at, it's like the hidden numbers and uh, I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, but we found these answers. I don't know why you would do something like that if you were making a game like this. I don't know, we gotta min-max our our dad strats. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, it's so like... They're all the answers are all over the place, and if that's going to determine your route, like that'd be kind of crappy this early in. I think it's more for you to enjoy. I think so too. So one of the the first question is, uh, what's your uh, favorite thing to do on a Friday night? I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember all the answers, but one of them is uh, fall into the void, and then in parentheses sleeping. <laughs> right. Uh, um, another is uh, watching the History Channel. Falling asleep watching the History Channel. Oh, I'm sensing a theme. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I don't remember any of the others. Uh, another question is, what would you bring with you on a uh, desert island? Oh, yeah, and then the answers are like a boat or like candy or something. One of them is Castaway on DVD for instructional purposes. <laughs> uh, my favorite was uh, my, my uh, Lost sta- Shaker of Salt. Oh my god. Yeah, that was it. God. <laughs> oh, Dream Daddy. Love it. How old is, is the dad it's supposed to be in right? this game, right? Because like, sometimes it's like 35-year-old dad, and sometimes it's 55-year-old dad. Well, I mean, I guess you can design them to be as young or as old as the creator allows you to. I mean, it's not marketed toward dads, so it's just marketed toward, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's supposed to be like, you're dad, so we gotta have... The shotgun approach to that. Yeah. What's your idea of a dad? Well, we could cover that. Yeah. It's like Total Recall, but for dads, you know, and they're like, uh, <laughs> did I just date myself on that one? Nobody saw it. All right. Whatever. Yeah. Real bad. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, which which version of Total Recall? Because. Oh, my God. oh the, the, the <laughs> real one. Oh, the best. The Colin. The Co- of course, the Colin Farrell one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't even go to Mars. No, the Colin Farrell one did have some cool nods to the original, though, at the very least. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not saying it was the better one. No. Boy, we opened a can of worms here. <laughs> the next question is, uh, what did you want to be when you grow up? There's a lot of goofy ones, like a pro skater who is also an astronaut, or the king of space. A uh, professional technical writer that writes instructional documents. <laughs> Uh, it's like, what, what's your favorite movie or something like that? Yeah. Uh, what are your turn-ons? And they're all funny. Like, the turn-ons are all funny. Like, one of them's, like, eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m. <laughs> but also, it's weird how, like, this is, like, definitely, um... Because the whole, the whole thing is kind of, like, the, the fun tone of the rest of the game. But it's pretty obvious it's a dating site. Like, it's turn-ons, ideal dates, stuff like that. Which is, if you were connecting with other dads, you know making friends way which is what amanda keeps saying that's not something you would normally do on the dad book but obviously this is a dad dating site it's weird how they had like a they kind of maintain this fi- in-game fiction as they're going along even yeah. after you fill out your dad book <laughs> this is this is where the game grumps are saying to you the player we know what you're here for yeah <laughs> maybe it's amanda just being like hey dad i think you need some friends wink wink <laughs> <laughs> please <laughs> Please stop hanging around with me at the mall. She's 18. It's impossible for her to imagine her parents, like, dating, like, sexual at all, right? It's just like, that's not even possible. All these dads are friends. 
I, um, I mean, it's funny because going back to your theory from last time about that, uh, what is it? The, the spouse died recently. Mm -hmm. So like Amanda's kind of helping him through that. So like I could go with maybe the spouse that died a while ago and now she's kind of like, yeah, get on dad book, make some friends, maybe someone who will like be a companion to you while I'm off to college. That kind of, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's like, maybe dad's ready to move on kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know though. Well, and, and I, as we'll see, the level of romance is, like, it's, like, beginning a relationship. It's not, like, you don't get married at the end of this. Sorry, everyone. It's not, it's not dander. Yeah, and also, if you're playing the game normally, you can date a bunch of different people. And so it's kind of like, especially in the, the first date, is, like, is it a date? Is it just hanging out and having fun? Like, depending on your choices, it can be either one. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. I like that kind of thing. And like Divac said, you, you're you not really going to get an ending until you go on the third date with someone. So you can go on two dates, basically, with everyone and then just choose which path you want to go down. Yeah, it's fun. I like I like games that... I think it lets you be friends with everyone that you want to be friends with and then date the person you want to date. Um, and I really like that. I, I like that they can also just be friends and have a good time. It seems like they're all friends, no matter what, after, like, the the, the pun storm at the grill. Hmm. So, yeah, I have, I have a question. So does the game just, like, let you be friends with people until you get three dates with somebody, or do you choose three dates? Well, I mean, you have to do good on the dates, because as you... Yeah, you have to get S rank. Yeah, let's go through, let's go through the, the first date with Craig. So, oh, and when you log into Dadbook, it says, Welcome, you've got dads. Oh, Toad Dream Daddy. Uh, so... I don't get that reference. <laughs> the sad part is how many people don't get the reference. Oh, no, kids these days. I don't think that's sad. It, like, whatever, that was a dumb thing. Are we just going to date ourselves this whole thing? It's like, oh. Yes. How old are we? <laughs> Well, no, that, not just us old enough to have used it, old enough to know the reference, which would mean know it when it was old, which was years ago. <laughs> I think I think You Got Mail is kind of ubiquitous enough that it's possible that it, like, eked into some younger kids' heads. I mean, there was that Tom Hanks movie, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I was just about to say, yeah. <laughs> so. Anywho. When you decide to message Craig, uh, you text him, and it has a little texting thing pops up, and it shows, like, like a text message. And um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but what I wrote in my notes is, we're going to hang out with our old friend. This is so good and pure. <laughs> like, he's just, like, really... Craig is always, like, really enthusiastic and um, positive and happy to see you and happy to hang out with you. And it's just really nice. It's just really pleasant. He's just a really fun person. I think, just in general. I'll tell you the thing I like about Craig, too, is that he calls you bro a lot, and he'll say your name, comma, bro, and uh, my character's name is Slow, so that's right, kids. <laughs> you know, Pokemon <laughs> reference, there you have it. Hey. Finally, something the kids will understand. You got Pokemon. <laughs> my, uh, we're... Yeah. <laughs> it's completely derailed with the Slow Bro. Um... So I, what I like about Craig is when we were first starting with him, like all we when we decided to go with him, all we had to know about him was his picture. And last session, I sort of got the idea, like, oh no, he's just going to be like the stereotypical gym dude, which he is in a way, but he's not like the the sort of dick gym dude, I guess. Like, like the yeah. yeah. He's totally cool with us not knowing anything about exercise, not being in as good shape as him, like. He, that, it's very much like this is what he loves to do and he loves to share it with people with you but he doesn't judge you for not knowing he's like i'm I'm glad you pushed your limits like i'm i'm happy that you only did 10 minutes on the treadmill because that's more than you've ever done before yeah. it's so aspirational like i wish i could i wish i could treat myself that way when i do stuff i'm not good at you know it's like <laughs> a nice feeling <laughs> <laughs> so after we schedule the date with craig um we go to check on Amanda, our daughter, and she is in her bedroom working on a collage. And um, it's a collage about uh, her future, what she wants her future to be. She's a senior in high school. And uh, she looks like she's been crying. And when we ask her why she's been crying, she says, and there's different, different options for this. Um, 
but she says she's crying about dogs in movies. Yeah, it's something like it, they have they get hurt sometimes to make the movie. Yeah, it, it's to exploit you as a person, right? Into feeling emotionally vulnerable, right? And uh, so you could there's different options where you can sort of like get like you can either like be like oh yeah that that is sad or you can be like no like I don't think that's really why you're sad. What's what's actually happening? Yeah, um, I picked. You have to tell me the truth. You know. Um, what? And uh, oh. to rookie mistake. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I want to know what happens. Like, because I feel like if I just agreed with her, then it would be like, okay, I agree, and it would move on. And I was like, no, I want to see what happens. So um, she just continues to deny that she's upset. So I don't think there's an option that you find out why she's actually upset. You just have to intuit what's going on. She's talking about her future, so. I think you're on your way to that world's okay strategy. I think I got I got the good dad ending. Spoilers. Oh. Um, but so Amanda won't talk about why she's upset, and this is kind of continuing on from the intro where we had that parent teacher conference, and so she's and and really like of course she I could understand that she was crying like thinking about her future after you know going to college and all this stuff and not just um, thinking about how you know her other parent isn't going to be there, but also just, it's, you know, it's scary to think about. There's a lot of pressure at that at that stage where you feel like if you don't go to the right college, you know, your life won't be the way that you want it to be and all that kind of, all that kind of pressure where they tell kids that your whole life depends on this one decision that you make when you're 18. And it does. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, not, let's not mistake ourselves. If you are 18, feel frightened for your entire life. No, don't do that. Really not that big. Flurries don't give a shit about that anymore. Turns out a way, and it, you'll be okay. Um, so, it's in, like, do you remember what was in the collage? It was like, there were a bunch of dogs. And money. Right, and her dad was there. Didn't she say that she would stay if we got her a dog? Oh, yeah, yeah. Amanda loves dogs. Yeah. So we, we tell her, well, okay, tomorrow we're going to go to uh, see a softball game. We're going to go to Craig's kids' softball game. And um, and Amanda agrees to go with us for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was afraid of softballs, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Game. And then they do this whole setup. That was really cute. And she, she was afraid. She got hit by one or something. Yeah, she like yeah, she got hit by one, and then she's like afraid of one coming out into the outfield or the into the crowd and hitting her, you know. Or I feel like it was a baseball or something, because then when we get to the softball field, she's like, I thought she made a joke, like it's not as soft as you think. No, she got hit by a softball, and that's why she she knows that it's not soft. Yeah, she has a lot. She has a lot to say about it, <laughs> and um, so. Craig's, uh, Craig is the coach of his twin daughter's softball team, and the, so- the team name is the Flapjacks, so they are the Maple Bay Flapjacks. And they're playing the Pinewood Ocelots, which is a lot. There's a lot mm-hmm. going on in these games. I like, uh, it's fun. You know, this is, they're, they're, they definitely, there's no part of this dialogue or in the, the, any of the narrative stuff that they aren't having fun with. Like, the oh, whole yeah. game. Right. Yeah, definitely. And again, very well written. Yeah, every every line is a joke, but it doesn't feel forced. That's like it doesn't. It's not obnoxious. Um, yeah, it feels like somebody yeah. enjoyed themselves writing this. Like it mm-hmm. feels like somebody like oh, let me just have fun with this. Yeah, totally. It's definitely the sort of thing you can imagine people sending to each other and just like crying, laughing over their own joke that they just wrote. <laughs> Um, so we watched the game, um, and, uh, we're there with Amanda, and, uh, she's, like, yelling at the, at the kids, and, like, telling them baseball things, and, um, so she's like, yell something, too, and, uh, I chose to yell, uh, what's important is that you're having fun? Yeah, so did I. <laughs> the correct answer. <laughs> I yelled something else. <laughs> it's like, the other ones are, like, normal, like, like, get in there, kind of, or, like, something about form. Chase that rock. Yeah, they're like not. They're not like normal, normal. Like you would probably. It's like it's like two into it. You know what I mean? Like they're all funny, basically. Mm-hmm. It's 
Yeah, uh, I know. I mean, I know what you mean more like they're like things you should be yelling technically, but they're like the phrase, the terminology is like off, and I can't remember exactly how. It was all really good stuff, though. And uh, so we we yell stuff, um, and we watch that one of the kids um, goes. One of the kids on the team goes to catch a ball and gets hit with it instead by accident, and Craig handles it like a responsible adult and is very, like, in control of the situation, and, like, basically he's a really good coach. And, um, and so we were like, aw, that's so nice. And, uh, then uh, the game continues, and a foul ball gets knocked right at us. And Dad closes his eyes. (laughs) (laughs) It's coming right at Amanda. Um, but she's not a little kid anymore, and she catches it. Curing her fear of softballs. Wow, what a great story. <laughs> it sounds sarcastic <laughs> when you say it like that. <laughs> and so that's the end of Craig's route. It was a sweet moment. <laughs> yeah, that was... So, then we meet... So then the game's over, and we meet... Uh, Craig introduces us to his twin daughters, Briar and Hazel. Uh, Amanda reacts to Briar and Hazel by being like, oh, you're twins, do you have psychic powers, do you have <laughs> special abilities? Which one is the evil one? Oh, yeah, and then they agree that Briar's the evil one. No, Hazel is. Right? Or Hazel's the evil one? I don't, I don't remember. It's Hazel. Hazel, go- <laughs> Briar goes, Hazel is, and Hazel goes, yeah, it's me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of weird that we had two dads with twins, uh, but hmm. I guess, like, um... Oh god, I can't think. Christian and... Joseph's creepy twins, though, are, like, a joke. And these are more, like, actual children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I love how you don't interact... Even though you don't talk to the kids very much, like, you get a lot... You learn a lot about them, and, like, you get a good grasp of who they are for being kids, like, in the little short interactions. So, then we then we come across one of the next uh, sort of plot points of Craig's entire route, which is that uh, all the moms on the softball team want to bang him. <laughs> yes. Well, and also, given the way Craig looks, not unusual. <laughs> like, if there was a coach that looked like that, the single moms would be all over him. Yeah, all, all of And it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. They're all over him. Um, so, so one of them is like, oh, we should go out for pizza. And Amanda makes a joke, like, oh, yeah, we'll go to Thirsty's Pizza. And she's like, what? And she, and Amanda's like, what? It's a real place. And I really like that line. That, that made me laugh so much. But Amanda does, Amanda is cognizant that this is, she is acting thirsty. Not Amanda, yeah. the, the mom. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, yeah, and, um, and then they, then it cuts to Thirsty's Pizza, and you can, like, see part of the logo where it says Thirsty's Pizza. Yeah. I just, I don't know, that one really got me. I really thought that was funny. Also, Amanda's just really well-written. Like, her dialogue is fantastic. She is. Amanda rules. She does. And, like, a lot of times she'll just, and like, she, people don't really pay attention to her too much. And, like, she's not written as a kid. Like, she, uh, partially, yes, and especially with, like, the plot points. But a lot of the, her very extremely fast dialogue is not something that a kid would probably come up that quickly. She's, she's written like a wingman. Yeah, like, one of the choices... One of the choices in the pizza in the pizza shop is like you can pretend to throw up or she can pretend to be sick and about to throw up to get out of the pizza shop to get away from all the thirsty moms. She's really like a golden girl. Like she really sounds like. Yeah, she was. I was going to say she's kind of like a well, I guess technically is a wingman in this situation. Right. But she's like actually like because basically there's one mom who won't leave Craig alone. Right. And he's yeah. like, bro, you got to help me. <laughs> and so, and by the way, did we mention Craig's wearing River the whole time here? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. And she makes adorable faces, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, anywho, sorry. I don't uh, remember what the mom. They, the, all the moms on the team have, like, real, like, previous generation mom names, like Martha and Deborah and stuff like Joan. that. Joan. Like, Janet. Yeah, very, yeah. like, baby boomer mom yeah. names. Helen. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not on sc- they're not on screen and like they make a comment about like that's a mom for you. Almost like moms are like this mythical <laughs> being that we're not going to discuss in the confines of this game. Moms no longer exist. <laughs> they can't be drawn in their physical forms. You just have to imagine it. Yeah. It's like a post mom society. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I no, I love this idea that they 
that moms in this realm are like eldritch creatures that can't be visually seen. Well, except for Mary. Yeah. I am sad we never get to meet Smashley, though. I really wanted Smashley to have a sprite. Oh, well. Oh, well. Guess you'll just have to use your imagination. Oh, she definitely has two-tone hair. She's got, like, you know, the, the black with the blonde highlights. She's also super ripped. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. Right? Like, also? Like, she's she might be, yeah. like, a, like a, a wrestler or, like, a roller derby type of person. Like, yeah. Someone named Smashley. I mean, come on. Uh, so there's also the so the one of the moms is like really like we said really trying to trying to to get with Craig and doesn't care about us and uh, and the fact that we're there and trying to talk to Craig so Amanda uh, I think there's different things you can pick that you want to do to try to get her yeah. to go away um, I picked uh, try to throw up and of course the mom doesn't buy it because she's a mom and knows when a kid is pretending to throw up versus when she actually is yep Yep. Did we all pick that one? Yeah. Yeah. I did, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's like we went to the throw up. And it's like, oh, that's my choice right there. Yeah. It's what I've gone with before. <laughs> so then uh, Craig's daughters arrive and they want him to help them be good at DDR. So he goes off with them and he just doesn't have enough time to talk to us. He's just so busy. Um, so we go off with Amanda to play pinball. And that mom uh, from before comes up and asks us if we know Craig and if he's single, which would imply they don't know that he's single. <laughs> well, I oh, I kind of read that as like as like her way of being like, can you kind of like hook me up here? Or right. You, like, yeah. Give an, yeah. You know? Is he looking? Yeah. And we're like, he's he's my friend from college or whatever, and and she tilts the pinball machine by leaning on it. Which is extremely rude and difficult to accomplish. Totally. And Amanda keeps warning her. Yeah. <sighs> so all these all these moms don't care about us and are are they're just they're just real thirsty for Craig. Finally we can leave. And then um I think this is actually kind of a neat like choice, like narrative choice. We go back to the empty field and play catch with Craig and talk. Not just Craig. Let's catch. Not just Craig. Oh, not just Craig. Yeah. Sorry, Craig and River. So this is, like, my major problem with Craig is, like, you know. You don't play catch with your fucking kid, like, on you, in front of you. With a guy who you're friendly with, granted, but, like, like anybody could accidentally hit the kid with the ball. Yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, no, no. This is, this is like, what a bad move. What a uh, he's not I'm not going to say he's a bad dad. I'm just saying this is a this is a big miss. <laughs> okay. <Oof. laughs> like it's a sports commentary. I will say all the like the baseball and like oh no someone's going to get hit by this uh like as soon as uh like Amanda mentioned that I was like oh shit that happened to me as a kid with like the tiniest throw someone like knocked me in the nose and I wouldn't stop bleeding for an entire day. Yeah, I, I played softball when I was a kid, and I got hit with the ball a lot. Uh, I got hit with a softball, too. It hurts. Yeah. Were you playing softball, or was it the mall, or what? No, uh, I was just walking along and just got hit with a softball. No, it, I was <laughs> on the field, and it, like, f it flew into the air, and it was in front of the sun, and I couldn't see it, and it just beamed me right in the face. It's fucked up. God. It hurts. Don't play softball unless you want to be hurt. You play a game with with a ball, you get hit. I mean, that's that's what happened. I played games. With balls. I I was uh I was in gym uh in high school. I was sitting down for some reason, and you know, like I forget why if I didn't bring my uniform or something. With talking to this kid Doug, and we're they were playing like some kind of kickball kind of thing, and I saw you know like the kickball like that soft rubber you know. Mm -hmm. I saw it flying right toward us, and like. All I really had time to do was lean back, and it, like, wailed Doug right in the face. <laughs> it's, like, one of those things I feel, like, I think back, like, could I have prevented that from happening? <laughs> you know, like, it, like, I wasn't, like, thinking, like, oh, I gotta get out of here, fuck Doug. Like, you know, it was, like, in the <laughs> Uh, so you're you you're sad that you couldn't save Doug. <laughs> it's like one of those things you think back on, like, oh yeah. yeah I just I just I just picture you on Normandy Beach looking like the Matrix. Yeah. 
I just, I remember it, like, coming, like, distinctly, and just kind of leaning away. In like, slow-mo watching it peg Doug in the head. <laughs> I just love the idea that, like, there is a non-zero amount of hours of sleep that you've lost over this. <laughs> oh, no, I don't give a shit. I just remember, like, you know. Just wake up in the middle of the night. You yell, like, I could have saved him, and your wife is like, what? Did something bad happen? And you're like, no, it's the kid who got hit in the face with a dodgeball. Doug! <laughs> I'm sorry, Doug. And that man tur- turned out to be diabetes. <laughs> so, anyhow. That's how you got the diabetes. <laughs> no, oh, no. It was made of sugar. So, um, or antibodies. Um, and so... <laughs> Uh, what happens? We talk to Craig and we ask him all the questions. So, a uh, question you ask, ask him about his kids. He has three kids. He talks about it like, um, a lot of people say this, um, but I feel like you don't hear men saying it a lot, um, which is uh, a shame because it's very sweet. And he says he didn't know what he wanted to do with his life until he had kids. And he's like, I was all over the place. I didn't really have what's motivated to do a job, but he's really motivated to be a father. And he's like, this is this is great. This is what I was meant to do. All right. Now I got to tell you, because I thought this came later, but I'll say it. I absolutely 110% related to that. Yeah, it's so sweet. It, it, I don't know. Like, I don't, I hate talking like this because I feel like when you talk to people without children, it's like this implicit sort of you got to have kids thing. And I don't mean it that way at all. And I totally get whatever, but like, it is it is really fucked up how that works. Where it's just like everything in your if everything in your life led to you having kids, it was worth it no matter what. It's like crazy. But that said, I mean, yeah. So basically it's like a get out of jail free card <laughs> for life, you know? It's like you Aww. can fuck up all you want, but just have a kid and yeah, you're set. Boom. So that's very it's very sweet. It's a very sweet thing. And I, I was I, there's a lot of things like that where I'm I'm touched that it's included in the game because it's like a, it's a, it's definitely a real sentiment that a lot of people feel, um, but it it really speaks to the the to there's there's earnestness in this game. Yeah. But I want to say if a dad wrote that, no dad would have let Craig have River while he was playing yeah. catch. I mean. I don't know, Dream Daddy. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, those same dad instincts that kind of reward you for, like, you know, being like, oh, God, I feel so good now that I'm a dad and I feel like I have a sense of purpose would also be like, don't let your kid, kid get hit by that, that softball. Protect your kid from the softball. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Because you, can you imagine at the hospital, too? Like, what happened? Like, nothing. You know, like, I mean, <laughs> you can't. We were playing catch. Just fell out of the sky. <laughs> Sl- that guy threw a ball at him. You know, like, it's so... <laughs> Somebody call the cops. <laughs> the kid beating my... The guy beating my kid. I, I Now I kind of, like, want it to have happened, but River caught the ball because she's, like, really, really sports and athletic like her dad. And I'm like, wow. Like baseball, baseball baby? Yeah, baseball baby, if you will. The new... <laughs> <laughs> From the people who brought you Air Bud. It's Bass Baby. <laughs> the new animated <laughs> film for the summer. <laughs> Bass Baby! Cookies are for catches. <laughs> <laughs> they, can't, they can't give them any, any gum to chew to blow bubbles or anything like that in the stereotypical baseball way, so it's just spit bubbles. Well, he just blows spit bubbles, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bass Baby. Uh, <laughs> I'll laugh when I, my daughter stops watching fucking Boss Page. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry that there's a Netflix series. You have my condolences. Oh, no, I, and I've seen all of it, yeah. So Craig's uh, Craig's day job is selling fitness gear. Um, so that's that's what, he, that's what he does when he's not a coach. And uh, we asked Craig also about the moms and, that all want to have sex with him and, on the team. And they talk about, like, how strong and muscular he is. It's it's a lot. And uh, he says it's usually even worse. This was this was light. Like, what what is worse? Like, they just start throwing friggin' garments at you? Like, with, like, there, there's Monta Pants, Craig. <laughs> like, what? Uh, but he's not interested. He's interested in peace and quiet. And we can relate to that. Uh, and he has, he has really normal sounding reasons for not wanting to date. He doesn't have enough time. He doesn't want to put his kids through it. Um, and I think all that stuff seems very like reasonable answers as to why someone would feel like they didn't want to date. Yeah. 
Also, considering how young River is, it's not been that long. Mm-hmm. Like, Craig needs a little time. <laughs> so, uh, we tell him that the right person will come along eventually. Um, and then someone does get hit with a softball, but it's us! Oh. We get hit in the head of the softball. And, uh... Oh. We're fine, but but uh, Craig comes over and, and we do like a, a goof together where he's like, "Oh, it's it's really bad. It's worse worse than I thought." Right. And the flirt option, I guess we say, "Well, you, are you gonna kiss it better?" And he's like, "You would be so lucky." But then, but then, you can choose the option. I mean, uh, and you say, "I feel like I've earned it because I've been waiting to hang out with you all day." And then. He kisses your forehead. Yeah. And suddenly everything is very romantic. That's real. That's, that, that is hardcore flirting right there. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's like, we're, 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 we're not friends now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's very much like that was the moment, right? Yeah. Like, that was it. And like, there's no, like, you know, you're not, like, they're, these are two adults. You know what you just did there? Like, this isn't like you're, like, 18 when you're like, oh, did that mean anything when that person kissed me on the forehead yeah. for no reason at all? Yeah, no, it means something, dumbass. So, yeah. yeah, clearly the dads know. Yeah. So, right. but it definitely felt like that exact, like the, the forehead kiss and the, all that stuff. I feel like I've earned it. Like, I feel like that particular, that moment is like when you cross that line from like, we're just friends hanging out to like, oh, we're romantically interested in each other. Yep. I, I have to be honest too. I felt like it was a little early, but maybe yeah. that's just. But we are old friends and like, you can like. It was a forehead kiss. You can read into like they were they were like best friends in college. You don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. If they had a thing in college, if they had like uh, tension in college. You know, it's funny. I didn't even think of that. I was I was thinking more like it was the two friends who grew up together and they never really knew what they wanted, kind of thing. But yeah, I totally hear that. I could see like they they pounded a bunch of thirty packs or something. And, you know, hey, stuff happens. Made then, out a couple times. Don't remember. <laughs> exactly. Like they, you know. Yeah. Pounded something, am I right? Hey, <laughs> I, I kind of wish they had addressed that a little bit, like like uh, run into see a. See you next week. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Finger guns out of here. Hey, no, but just a little, maybe a little bit of alluding to that backstory would have been cool. But yeah, you don't have to do it. It just would have been. I think it maybe would have developed it a bit bit more. But you know, still, it seems like we can imply there might have been a little bit more going on before. And 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 then they do talk more about college as they're walking back to the car. They tell this whole story about how they were at a party in college and the cops got called on the party and they ran and jumped a fence. And on the other side of the fence was a parking lot where all the cops were parked. But the par- the, but they didn't know that they were coming from the party. So they just talked like, man, huh, just those other kids at the party. That's... Uh, that 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 they're bad. We're not we're not from there. And and they were like talking about how like Craig said he wanted to join the force and stuff like that. I kind of missed the 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 context of this when I was reading it for because for a second I thought they were pretending that they were cops with them or like they were backup. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think they would have got. But yeah, they they had to like pretend to have a pleasant conversation with these police officers for like half an hour which is like the most it's it's so specific it's almost like pretend to be sober too yeah it's it's almost like like it almost, like something similar really happened to one of the writers or something like that you know it, yeah. that's what it feels like like oh oh not me officer no i want to i want to enter the academy one day indeed yeah. yes yeah <laughs> so we we make it home uh, after the date, and we see Amanda's collage, and it's got money dogs, and having a good relationship with us. We cry Aww. about it. It's so cute. Um, and uh, we go to bed, and we get a, a summary screen for our first date with Craig, and uh, it adds up all your points. It has a bunch of arbitrary bars and stuff that are filled up. It does this gag multiple times, but I will say the bars are contextual to the date that you go on. Yeah. So, like, well, with a, like, there's catch, pinball, run, sports, flip-up sunglasses, like, stuff like that. Marinara, I think, is one of them. I, not on mine. I had relaxed at. I'm looking at the screenshot now. Uh, I'm wondering if, maybe, unless, unless it's, like, random, like, a random word pool, maybe. Possible. Or it's some other one. But, uh. Yeah, then it gives you a, a, a rating. And so, uh, for our 
playthrough, we S ranked date one with Craig. And you get like be- when you get like the the S rank, you usually get some like uh little vocal um sound bite. Just like yeah. nice dadding or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think this this one I the one I got was you it sounded like Craig. It was just like, Yeah, way to go, bro. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so you get that cute little screen, and, uh, cause this is a video game, and, uh, the next morning, uh, the next bit of story before the next date, uh, is more college admission letters, uh, Amanda finds out that she has been accepted into the Horn Institute for the Arts, which she really wanted to get into, and we're like, we're worried because it's expensive and far away, but we're like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. You apply for those scholarships and, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna make it, you know, you're, we're gonna figure it out. And in my notes, I wrote, damn boy, what else you got going on? Fucking move. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you worried about being far away? Like, come on. Yeah, like you just moved. Like, it's clearly, it's not a big deal for you to move. Yeah. I mean, they moved, didn't they just move across town though? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're really worried about it, like, it's just you, and you don't have roots or anything like that, so, like, you could move closer. Wait. No, no, no. He just closed on that house. I mean, come on. That's, you can't. That's tricky. Get out of here. Wow, that's the daddest thing you've ever said. But, and they all, and he, you know, he closed on that house, and he knew full well she wanted to apply to that college, so. Oh, it was a bad, it was a dumb move, yeah. No, totally. Yeah, he really... Never mind, who moves right before senior year or during senior year? Nobody moves during senior year. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, they had to they had to downsize because there was a little bit of a family issue, I think, was what we determined. Yeah, I, that's what... That's Yeah, that's what I assume, is that they... Then you rent! Downsizing on one pair. Yeah, there's a lot... You know, there's a lot of plot holes in Dream Daddy, I gotta say, you know? <laughs> Come on, what, what dad isn't gonna think... Financially sound decisions. We're not the smartest dad. I, excuse me, no. No, 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 no. No. No plot holes. There is ludonarrative dissonance. <laughs> okay? The player game disconnect, thank you. The story game disconnect, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ludonarrative dissonance. Oh my god. Well, you know, we've, we've talked about this before. Um, you, only you have. You're the only one that talks about ludocognitive narrative dissonance, <laughs> or whatever the fuck you keep saying. None of those are real words. It is. Not you're making right. stuff up on the spot for this podcast, and I won't stand for it. Okay. Okay, kids, simmer down. Don't make me turn this podcast around. You're not my dad. We're all, we're all pure dads here. <laughs> we need to be merging our... Latin and normal terms. <laughs> so, as as a as a um, <laughs> as a reward, we take Amanda out for dinner to anywhere she wants, and she wants food truck burritos. So we eat burritos, and uh, we talk about college. Uh, we say that Craig was our first roommate in college, and that's why we're friends, which is adorable. Um, my first remaining college was horrible, so I can't relate to this at all. Um, and uh, we have we have a good a good parent child relationship, and it's very sweet. And we're like, I'm so proud of you, and we cry and give and hug each other. It's very cute and sweet. very like you know that that big life changing moment of kid going off to college. Very sweet. So I'm guessing we all we all decide to be a good dad at this point. Yeah. I don't think you can not. Like, I don't know. I know there's options for it, but I couldn't do it. Well, there's an achievement for it. I don't remember if there were options, but, like, there's got to be more than just the, like, two sections where you get a choice to be a good dad or not. I don't I don't think that there's a bad dad. I think you've got, like, good dad and less good dad. You could be, like, yeah, like, nosy dad or, like, hard-ass dad seems like. Not really hard-ass, but, you know, more like, you know, like, ah. I gotta address everything right away. There's like a world's okayest dad achievement and a world's greatest dad. Like those two. Yeah, there's not like a uh, goes to the bar every day at 10 a.m. kind of achievement. Yeah, I don't think you could get a bad dad achievement without this game going to some like uncharacteristically dark places. But at, but at any rate, 
Amanda's got a good line about don't make me cry at the burrito. It'll make me taste. It'll make it taste sad, which I liked. <laughs> that is a good joke. So who wants to talk about the second date? Sure, I'll do that. Yeah, me. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll tell you why, okay? Because we messaged Craig again. We're like, how about for a run round two, you know? And, uh, and Craig arrives wearing fucking River again. And it's like, dude, you cannot fucking run in one of those things. Like, they're not that secure. You can walk, you can do shit, you can't fucking run. Like, not even jog. God damn it, Craig. Well, maybe that's one of the products that he sells, is a runnable version of that. You're talking about papoosing, okay? I I thought we already talked about these made-up words. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought no, I wanted to say that, I didn't really want to talk about that. Uh, a... a- a baby gyroscope. You just put your child in the orb, perfectly perfectly level at all times. Yeah, and, and that it doesn't get shaken around everywhere when you run. But, like, very briefly, I will say, not maybe not a plot all, but a thing that I don't quite get, and maybe they explained it and I missed it, but, like, if uh, the twins are obviously being watched by someone, right? Because they're not that old. Mm-hmm. They're, you know... Or when they're not with him. I assume they're either at school or with their mom. Yeah. So what about River? I, I, I imagine Smashley doesn't like taking the infant every so often. <laughs> I guess so. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know how custody agreements work. Maybe there is, like, a thing. Whatever. Maybe maybe River's just at that stage where she just wants to be with her dad all the time. She's not, not at the mom stage yet. The twins also might just be, um, you know, they don't even need to have someone watching them. Could just be, like, stay at home, don't do drugs. I'm, I'm just saying... Can't run with can't run with a baby. If this guy's running with a baby, though, you think he cares if his like ten year old twins are home alone? Fair, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but he is characterized as being like really, like really into the uh, into being a dad. So I think it's it's under control, but we don't hear about what exactly it is. I feel like there probably is some kind of dissonance, like where the art people are. I keep uh, the art people are kind of like it's really cute if Rivers here, and then whoever's writing some of the dad stuffs like, no way, though the baby's coming. And then there's like some arguments, just like, oh, fine, it's not a huge deal, you know? Like, who's really gonna know? And the answer is me. <laughs> Actual dads. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's kind of a joke that Rivers always there because she makes faces and reacts to things. Anyhow, I don't know if anybody else does want to talk about. Uh... This, uh, Jim, if you really want to like seriously talk about it. <laughs> sure. So, dad book time. We invite Craig out, and he says, hey, let's meet for brunch, but the run part is capitalized. So that's a, that's a clever little thing they do. And um, the night before we go to brunch, and I'm pronouncing the run real capital, um, They um, you spend the I night with Amanda. It. Yeah, I thank you. And she wants to order pizza, and then you get the option to suggest, hey, let's do salad instead, but she doesn't want to. And then apparently Amanda is just so willful, she grabs the phone and calls Papa John's. And she orders <laughs> the garlic cups, and we all know where those come from. She is on, like, a first-name basis with this with this ordering person, too. They both are, yeah, like, they know them at the pizza place. And the pizza guy knows the dad, too. He's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it, I'll bring over stuff. And uh, and the, the guy on the phone is is Rico, and she's like, and Amanda's like, Rico, he's like, well, can you put a salad there too? And and she's like, Rico wants to know if oregano is a salad. It's pretty funny. Did you say yes? I definitely said yes. I said yes. <laughs> yes, oregano is a salad. Oh god, yeah, and and, uh, and they, they just you end up just having an, another fun dad and daughter moment. And the next morning, Dad throws on his tennis shoes, an old t-shirt from a writer's summit, which I guess maybe is his job, I don't know, and heads out to run with Craig, which sounds like the worst running outfit ever. <laughs> I'm sad our outfit never changes for this. Yeah, that car kind of sucks, especially when there's like there's so many options for dads. Like You should be able to choose like The Sims, where you could have like your running outfit and your sleeping outfit and stuff. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway... Um, you know, you you meet Craig out at the park, and Craig's wearing his kid, and you kind of and uh, the the dad kind of looks like a, a little bit of a schlub next to Craig wearing his old uh, t shirt. Um, and the big thing of this is they head to the park, and uh, apparently there's just a, the, Craig has a whole training plan in place, which uh, dad, our dad is not in any way ready for. 
but he's been making an effort, which is, you know, it shows that he's making, he's trying to connect with Craig on his fitness level, and he's been running a bit. He's, like, um, doing, like, suicide sprints, which are, oh boy, that's not a, uh, that's not an introductory type of training. And we're also kind of lying about how, how good we are at, at uh, exercising. <laughs> Yeah, we are definitely lying. We've, we've literally we went from zero running to doing a few days of running before we met up with Craig. So this not quite uh, the best thing. And then we go right from like doing laps around the park to doing hill climbs, which is like not not a great idea to do. Like the like, hill work is not something you want to jump into as someone who has not been running. <laughs> I fucking. I knew, yes, I knew you would be on the runner stuff like I was on the dad stuff. I knew it. Oh my god, this is, it's killing me. And also they're using wrong terms all over the place. <laughs> it's like, for someone who runs marathons, <laughs> like, nope, that's not what you do at all. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what is, what is the wrong stuff? It, it's hill work. You don't, you don't call it hill climbs. Uh, they also call it, uh, car, they refer to carbos all the time, which runners don't talk about carbos. It's just carbs. And like, there's like four or five different things where you're like, no. And I think they say jogging once, and no runner says jogging ever. Jog- joggers are people who who keep running in place at a stoplight. Runners don't do that. <laughs> anyway, so um, we get to the uh, so the, basically every time you get a choice, which is my favorite thing here, is every time Craig's like, "Hey, you ready for the next part, bro?" And there are just different <laughs> versions of UG. And the correct one is the shortest version of UG, which translates to, let's do this! <laughs> so you're basically choosing your own internal UG. I used to hate when games did this. Um, the Tex Murphy games, the CD ones, would always do that, where like you would have three options, and they'd describe what you were going to say, and then you'd click it, and the character would say something else. It used to always piss me off. It's fine here, obviously. But... I don't know, lots of games do that, too. Yeah, but really, a lot. Of, it does annoy me, but here it always seems to... Um capture the spirit of it which at least you know yeah yeah you don't you don't feel like it's betraying you of like no i did not say that at all yeah exactly that's what i hate yeah (laughs) yep uh and then we reach a a big pivotal moment in this date which is that arnold the capybara is missing which is river's favoritist toy in the world and they have like a moment where he's like, oh yeah, I remember when amanda had a toy that she wouldn't let go of either and it was so dirty and gross but she loved it yeah. Now, I, I borrowed a trick from my sister where you get, like, multiple copies of the toy that your kid likes. Oh. Oh, oh no. Yep. My, my sister just, like, keeps swapping out toys with them, so they never have a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to do it, I guess. My daughter's really into frogs, so we have a ton of frogs. Ah, uh, the classic frog phase. <laughs> my, my no my my wife actually got me a frog once as like a joke and she named it Jump. This is before we had the kids, and I w- went on a business trip and she put him in my suitcase without me knowing. And when I got there, I was like, "Why is why is Jump here?" She goes, "Well, he jumped in." And uh, <laughs> but wait, Aww. housekeeping, housekeeping. The next day, put him on my pillow. Like, like they thought I brought this stuffed frog with me to travel with. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, I feel like I've done that too. Like when I've been like at a con or something, and you get like a like a toy or something, and they'll like put it in a nice place. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it's something. So it's time for a bro adventure. Yes, and not just a bro adventure, a buddy cop movie too. Yeah. Yes. And so yeah, we uh we so we we basically start role playing our whole buddy cop thing and uh we like there's actually like a whole like there's a bunch of choices here which you have to actually do but you don't really have to do in any proper order you just have to do them all you can't skip any of these steps which uh you know you know if you miss anything you will get the bad ending so you have to kind of investigate each thing you know i don't think you have to double back at all but you have to investigate each option uh in each part of this thing while you're searching for the lost toy and um you talk to uh joseph uh, who's just weird. I don't know. Like, he just seems <laughs> off a lot. Yeah, he's reading a book about knots and rope tying, and we bu- and there's like a pause, and then he goes, for boats! Yeah. It's bondage jokes. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> or, or serial killer jokes. I don't know which ones he would, what they were going for. Yeah, right? <laughs> Depends on how dark you want to go. He's also acting like really suspicious, like, oh, did you did you think I took the the capybara? 
I I totally read it as as the bondage thing because that's like kind of the you know what I mean like oh like the sort of I guess like what am I trying to say here like the the sort of like standard issue family dad per se you know with like four kids and the wife at home and all that stuff you secret you know what I mean like I'm not into this that kind of deal yep and brings it to the park for reading material and he's also a youth pastor and he uh and. It's weird because it's kind of bantering, but also a little bit like, oh, we're kind of confronted, you Joseph. So that gets a little weird. But then you um, you keep going through and, like, investigating each area of the park. You talk to uh, Matt and Carmen Cena, and they're cool. They're just, like, kind of chill. And, like, you know, you, you're definitely joking around playing up this ad- this uh, way of, like, hey, we're the we're investigating this and we're the cops. And uh, they uh, they both they, – they keep they keep everything sort of light and, and – um, and you know, not too heavy. And then you meet up with the meet up with Robert, and at first it comes off a little bit like he's a little defensive. But then you realize that Robert's also playing along, which is yeah, just, I love that. It was really funny. Yeah, I, I I really like Robert. I'm like so like if we're talking serial killers, like every time I see Robert, I'm like oh fuck, there's he's burying a body or something, and then he's just like he's almost the daddest of them all. Yeah. yeah. He's about to make a joke about the fact that you think he knows you think he's burying a body. I liked when we met Joseph. It's like we lost like her capybara, and like, and then Craig's like, "It's a South America, a rodent native to South America." And then that's you're about to do that same bit to Robert. He goes, "I know, it's a rodent from South America," which I <laughs> yeah. liked, but that was good. Got the writing. And uh, at some point along this trip, you discover just just the leg from Arnold the Capybara, which yeah. gets a little bit disturbing, even though the thing's playing it up is like, oh, man, this is a clue in our investigation. Yeah, right? Yeah, this whole thing gets a little dark, especially I got the wrong ending because one of the playthroughs we were, we were using did not give us all the proper things to do. So I got the wrong ending the first time. And like the wrong ending is just depressing. So the proper ending, though, is you eventually find jo- Joseph is twin- Joseph's twins who are on their own in the middle of the woods for, like, kids that look about eight. I don't know why he's just sitting by the, like, in one part of the park and letting them go wherever the hell they want. But they're cutting the stuffed animal up like they're serial killers. Yeah, and they say, like, they imply that this is, like, a thing they regularly do. Yeah. It's a game, right? Yeah. And the weird thing is, like, b- like I think in the introduction scene, the two twins were... Yeah, they just they were kind of like playing up, like oh no, we're the creepy twins. But you think it's a joke, and then you realize, no, nah, not a, not that much of a joke at all. No, these kids actually have problems. I and, and good ending or bad, we don't tell uh, Joseph about it, which I don't really agree with, because like I feel like I would want to know if my kids were doing shit like that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a little. I mean, I, I guess I get to, though, that's another, like, story game distinct, because you don't want to go that serious about it, other than why include it. You know what I mean? Because I guess you wouldn't want to actually get into a thing of, like, Joseph, we need to talk about uh, those, the twins, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, and that will just put a damper on a date. We got a, we got a friend to bang, so, you know, it's like... Also, like, in this situation, like, we don't really know him that well. Like, it, it, it definitely came across as, like, this guy and his weird kids can deal with their themselves. All right, that's fair. But we do, in the end, we do get we do get Arnold the Capybara back. Congratulations, everybody. And then I guess that's just good enough, like, I guess. Like, it's not even addressed, like, at some point, Craig's gonna sew it or something, I don't know. Uh, but But he's in pieces, but back. And uh, you you do head out to brunch with Craig, um, which which is Craig has a nice thing. I forget the options, but it's there's like uh, two options for brunch, which is like the the high end uh, mimosa brunch and the just greasy grimy brunch. Yeah. The the coda the code quote unquote correct answer here is the the greasy brunch. But no, if you're going to brunch, get those get those fucking mimosas. Ain't nothing wrong with a mimosa. Mm-mm. Yeah. Serious. Or or Belgian waffle. Oh yeah, I had a uh, fantastic like orange flavored uh, old fashioned and like brunch at a brunch place one time. Fantastic. Oh my god. Listen, I have a new fucking yo new life goal. Uh, I am gonna I am gonna get a fucking Belgian big Belgian waffle as a pillow and sleep <laughs> on it because those things are awesome. <laughs> life hacks. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm staying at a hotel with a with like a waffle maker in the breakfast area, I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. 
Also, I'm not exactly sure why a um, mimosa is like super fancy. It like the way it's just champagne and orange. Yeah, they were like they made it sound hoity-toity. It's like no, it's it's an excuse to drink at like nine a.m. Oh my god, it's like yeah. that and the Bloody Mary. You know, like, there's a place across the street from me that does unlimited, and they just keep refilling your glass. Like you can't, li- you literally can't ask for more. They'll just be like, oh, you want more mimosa? Boop, right in the thing. Anyway, so uh, you you head to Grimy Brunch, and uh, and once again, uh, because you know, uh, granted, Craig looks like Craig. The waitress is just constantly hitting on him as from the moment you walk in, and uh, you can just tell all the stuff that you get, like you're trying to keep his attention, but she's going hard. So uh, eventually, you talk about how you used to go camping in college, and um, and you, the thing that you do is like, yo, know, Craig, you need to get out of here. Like, let's, let's do it again. Let's. Let's go cramp camping. Let's do this. And, and Craig, being the super responsible dude that is kind of a character element that's coming through, says, "I don't." He doesn't think he can. He can't make the time. Uh, and the first, that's kind of the first hint you see a crack in Craig's demeanor of like his him not being able to do something. I, I will also say this doesn't seem like something the the dad that they have written so far would suggest. Yeah, it seems like we're having a change of heart. Considering how like lazy, like couch surfing kind of dude well then i think it really shows that we're trying to do something nice for craig right like it's because it's not really something we wanted to probably right and and yeah and it and it shows like craig is the type of person who's always taking care of all the people around him but he doesn't feel like he can ever take time for himself and we go home and immediately collapse <laughs> That is hilarious. Because, like, after you, like, suggested, Craig, that, like, oh, yeah, we're going to, you got to do something for yourself. You leave the place. You talk to Amanda. And then you just start going wobbly in the knees. Yeah, I think you collapse in the hallway. You literally do. <laughs> and you, like, say to Amanda, like, I think I'm just going to rest here. I was more surprised that he was able to get up from, like, the brunch table. Yeah. Because you have one of those types of workouts. You're, you're not really going to get up for quite a while. And, uh... This, by the way, I'm looking at the yes rank screen for on this date. Um, I got marinara here. Ah. Hmm. Which is odd because I don't, well, I guess it's not that odd. But uh, yeah, I got marinara, bro, thirsty, dad bod, home cooking, worthwhile hobby. Hmm. When do we have marinara on this date? That's why I'm wondering if it's just like a random pool kind of thing. Mm. Maybe maybe that's a, that's one of a... Uh... Craig's things is he likes marinara. Well, he's the one who who drank the bottle of marinara sauce. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 There you go. We don't know anybody who did that. I thought Turbo was the one. <laughs> yeah. Huh. We're we gonna bring that up every uh, every yes. episode now. Yeah. Every episode where marinara comes up. Oh, so every yeah, every episode then. I mean, how often do you have <laughs> the chance? <laughs> Okay, who wants to talk about day three? We go... Oh, wait, but something happens. What happens? Uh, Amanda is very upset. She is sobbing, crying. And it's like, you can ask her if something happened and she doesn't want to talk to you. And uh, it, things are kind of awkward and you feel bad. And the next morning, you wake up early and you make her a cake to feel better. I, I was just like, he's also like reminiscing like she's like i don't know what to do about this when it was when she was younger it was so easier we just you know eat sweets and just talk about whatever and he's like wait a second i got an idea and then just bakes this this cake yeah it's strawberry cake which is her favorite and she comes down she like is kind of like trying to like get out of there and without talking to you and you're like amanda though i have something for you and you pull this cake out of the fridge and it's there's icing and the icing <laughs> It says, sorry, dot, dot, you're sad, but I support you 100%. And there's a heart under it. And it's a very sloppy looking cake, um, but it's very sweet. Tasting. <laughs> See what I did? Uh, yep. Yeah. Definitely got oh, that. Good I joke. did it now. Huh? So, so, uh, when we get kicked back to the dad book selection screen, when you select the, the third date for anyone, it says, you know, third date is when things get serious. Just to. Oh, we're not going to discuss the Amanda thing? When she tells you the story? Yeah, that's. It's at that point where she kind of finally tells us what's going on. And up until this point, 
I was worried about because, like, obviously they're building up to something being wrong with Amanda, and the rest of the game is really lighthearted. But I was still just kind of worried. It's like, where are they going to take this? What's what's going on? And it turns out it's just um, there's it's like teenage problems, like with their friends and dating and boys and that kind of stuff. So I mean, it's it's sort of like legit problems though. Like she basically got thrust out of all of her friends like her entire friend so- circle right before the end of senior year of high school which like that can be pretty devastating serious yeah no she was like yeah she basically she liked one of her friends and she confided in her best friend and then like everybody stops talking to her and she sees them at the mall and then like they do that thing where they're like oh i don't want to hang out but they all text her at the same time so she goes to the mall and she sees them all together and then even worse her best friend is like i if you're holding hands or the guy's got the arm around her but it's like the guy she liked was with the other friend and it's like it's one of those things it's like yeah sure it's teenager shit but like you can kind of remember it's like that kind of shit's rough you know yeah. yeah but like one of the choices you can have when you're trying to console amanda about this is that high school sucks and the explanation behind that one is just it's very like to the point look High school sucks. You're, you know, you make friends with the people that you're around because that's those are the people that you're just around. You're going to go to college. That's like where you make your real friendships and you know what you're really about. And those are like, that's like the time period where you make the friends that are going to pretty much be your friends for life. Yeah. Although I could, one thing I will say is I got that explanation when I was in high school and it was always bullshit to me. Cause I like, like, dude, I can't think two weeks ahead. Everything is my world right now. I don't care that, oh, well, it's going to be better in college. Like, that's so far away. Like, I was so angry when my dad would say that to me. Yeah, because that's your whole world. That's why it, that's why it hurts so much. Cause it's, that's your whole world. I will also say people are just as petty in college. Like, and in life. Oh, yeah, just as an adult. See, nothing, none of this changes. Yeah. So when they're like, you you make your friends in college or your friends for the rest of your life, I, I'm, like, not friends with any of the friends I had in college right now. Yeah. You can't, like, you can't really know these things till you experience them. It's like Cassandra Syndrome, whenever, especially, like, whenever you talk to somebody who's at that previous stage, because it's like... Trust me, you're not going to care about high school, but you do until you're actually, not until the advice is no longer helpful when you are out of high school and you've already realized it. You know what I mean? Okay, back up, back up, back up. Okay, we've been through ludonarrative dissonance, papoosing, and now you pull out Cassandra syndrome, and I'm just supposed to, like, accept that? Like, what? Okay, all right, <laughs> oh all right, God. look. Ludonarrative dissonance is when a video game's playing and action collide with the story in a way, where, like, something realistically can't happen, but also has to be engaging and enjoyable for a player. Papoosing is the action of wrapping a child so its arms and legs can't move, and you usually do it at a doctor or a dentist if the child's, like, unresponsive, like, not unresponsive, but, like, uncooperative. Uh, and finally, Cassandra Syndrome is the streak myth of this woman, Cassandra, who could see the, who's cursed to see the future and see, but no one would ever believe her. Thank you. You're welcome. That was very succinct. This is an educational podcast. <laughs> so, um, uh, Ludo Narrative Dissonant. No, all right. So, so yeah, um, uh, it sucks. Yeah. yeah. How, how, I, I mean, it, 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 it was, uh, I didn't like write any of this down in my notes because I was like date going from date to date, which is why I forgot about it. But, uh, so, you know, some pretty, pretty real high school drama. Oh, yeah. It, it seems totally legitimate. Like, this is something that could happen where, like, you know, her friends are acting like dicks, but nobody's really a bad guy. It's just more like, oh, yeah, they're just, you know, people get you know, selfish because they're young and people get, you know, consumed in their own world. And maybe these aren't friends that you really should have long term. But it's also tough because these are your only friends. So it's t- you're not going to find new ones in a high school world right now when you're seniors. Excuse fucking me, Jim. But the bad guy here is the person being an asshole to our daughter. End of fucking story. <laughs> And I am going to find their dads and beat the shit out of them. Oh, my God. I don't think our dad in this story could beat anybody up. (laughs) Well, maybe after date 16 with Craig, we can start, you know. Maybe we could just ask Craig to do it. Yeah, that's exactly what could happen. All right, just fair. Okay. I see you've read the Infocom hit book for this one. Date three. Date three, the serious date. 
not really. But the the romance date, it's it's definitely time for a romance. Pretty serious. Yeah. So this is I I really like this date a lot. Um not the least of which because we see Craig without a shirt in his underwear and I play with I was playing this game on the bus. But <laughs> uh, I remember that I, was like, I had to put the screen down or something. I had to I tilted my laptop. <laughs> but anyhow. <laughs> So we, we we get to go camping with Craig, and he's initially freaking out, like, on the car ride, saying, like, um, oh, shit. Uh, he says, like, I think I left my, uh, my, um... Juicer plugged mix. in. Yeah, his juicer plugged in. It's like, well, shit, we gotta turn around. That's gonna burn the entire house down. <laughs> yeah, I like this date because from the beginning and then as the date goes on, and then by the end, it's like... This guy who seems to be, you know, outwardly just has all of his shit together is just really, like, he's a bundle of nerves, really. He's always worried about stuff. My dude has anxiety! Yeah, he's always worried about everything. Never has the time to do stuff. He has to be super in control. He specifically says that he's he's anxious about this, which is, like good that they use the correct wording uh so i i will say i like this date because uh it made me want to go camping oh i feel like this game like makes you want to do stuff right like we talked about uh folks folks on the podcast have been exercising lately and this like maybe that's why we chose Craig as our first person to date, and it, like, makes you think, like, oh, maybe I could get into this, maybe I could get into this, and it's all the the effects of having somebody be nice to you about it. So, just wait until we get to the dad that has, like, the alcohol wherever he goes and clearly has a drinking problem. That'll be a really fun <laughs> podcast to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're all too easily influenced, clearly. <laughs> Who wants to take date three? So what does Craig do? We show up. No, I can't. I can't. I already did one. Um, I mean, I guess I can do it. We, we, so we go to the, uh, we're basically on a car ride. Um, and. Craig made us Craig, a mixtape. He did. Shit. I forgot about that part. <laughs> he made us a mixtape. It was like all like their college hits and shit like that, wasn't it? Yeah. All the songs they liked when they were kids. Oh my God. Yeah. But, um, he's, he's, most of the car ride he's worrying about, you know, he says, like, what if there's a problem and we, we just say there won't be. Oh, yeah, it's like, first I plugged my, left my juicer in and then it's like, I don't have a signal or I left my phone somewhere. It's like, what happens if somebody needs me for the kids or like, you know, he's always worried about everything. Yeah, the signal thing is his big freak out when he's just like, oh, I don't have a signal. You know, like he, he's got to be in control, Craig, and he can't be in control when he can't be in, you know, when he can't communicate. I will say, if that happened to me, if like I lost signal and like I had, you know, people out there that were relying on me in some way or form, I would freak out a little bit too. Yeah. No, I, I, I kind of agree with that because the, like, for us, it's it's one that, like, Amanda, I think, can go a few hours, you know? But, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, River and River especially. And Oh, and Amanda's on a on a school trip. To good old Washington, D.C. There's a little bit at the beginning to, yeah, Washington, D.C. So she's being supervised. Whereas the Craig's kids, they're... They're with their mom. Just being looked after. But, oh, they are with Smashley. Yeah. And I started to think, like, maybe, maybe Smashley isn't ripped. Maybe Smashley's got, like, a meth problem. No! This game. You know, maybe a while ago, you know, like, she's over it now, mostly, so, like, you know, but Craig's like, hey, she can always backslide. So, uh, once we set up camp and, um, you know, all that, we're sort of like, oh, um, we should go relax and do something, and we find, like, a waterfall? Actually, before that, before that, they go into the woods to just relax, and they find a tree that looks like a butt and they spend a sizable amount of time just looking at this tree that ha- looks like a butt and describing the tree that 
looks like a butt and making butt jokes at the tree that looks like a butt. I can relate to this. I, 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 I don't know if I'm more disappointed that there was no art for the tree that looks like a butt or yes. more amused by the fact that there was no art for the tree that looks like a butt. Oh, uh, I could understand why there's no women or no mothers or whatever, but like, if you're going to have a tree that looks like a butt, you draw that tree that looks like a butt. <laughs> I want my butt tree. No. I don't think so. I think that I think your mind's eye of the butt tree, like no art will ever really match that. Oh yeah, that's right. You got to leave it to the reader because there's no way you could make the perfect butt tree. In the history of mankind, there was no art that could match the butt tree in your <laughs> own mind. No, okay. So I just Google image search tree that looks like a butt, and there are many, many, many good options here. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, is this the point of, at which we uh, look at Craig's butt, too? Yes. Uh, when we get to the waterfall. and Because we get to the waterfall, what are you going to do with a waterfall? Are you going to jump in? Yeah, but we didn't bring our bathing suit. Oh, no! But we... But, yeah, we didn't bring our bathing suits. What? What are you talking about? Oh, and we did put a tent together, sort of. And it's like... They're both like, yeah, I don't really remember how to do this. We sort of did it, but it looks pretty damn good to me, honestly. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but any, I'm sorry. I just wanted to jump, bring that detail in. But now, yes, we didn't bring bathing suits. So, of course, Craig's like, dude, what are you talking about? And he strips down to his skivvies, uh, which I think are like colored boxers or Under Armour or something. I don't think this game is supposed to be underwear. I think the, the implication is that that's the art, but it is not actual underwear. Well, then they should have drawn the big, thick dicks. Oh, so they censored it with underwear. (laughs) But your mind's eye of Craig's dick, no art will ever match that. (laughs) Wow, I didn't think about it that way, but... That's why they needed to prep you with the tree that looks like a butt. So they were like, okay, you know how you're not seeing butt tree? You're not going to see Craig's dick either. (laughs) I... I, uh, it's funny you say that because I didn't, I didn't think of it either when I was playing through it, and yeah, I can kind of see that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can see that totally, yeah. Because then you got wet underwear, you, you don't have any backup underwear, what are you going to do? You got to get the underwear off. For some reason, they, uh, they are like, we're, our dad is embarrassed to, to also strip down to jump into this water. And it's like, you're already in it, my dude. Like, it's too late now. Like, you can't be... What, are you going to be embarrassed now? Yeah, I mean... You know, it's funny, because, like, I felt that way until... Yeah, now the context of that Craig is naked and we have to get naked, too. And I kind of see that trepidation, in a way. Especially, like, the dude you're into, and he's, like, fucking built. And we are fucking not, you know? That's... I kind of get it, but yeah. But the the correct, the the most points option is to choose, uh, let's put on a show, and you do, like, a big goofy over the top, like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on a, a strip tease, but, but you're also a dad, so it's, it's corny. Right. And they jump in the water, and they splash each other in the water, because romance! This is, also, this is already, like, a bunch of, of stereotypes like oh we don't have a swimsuit and like oh i'm gonna splash you in the water like it's so funny to me that these stereotypes are here like romance story stereotypes are here it's like it's really corny but it's very sweet and you can just like you like one of the things that you're supposed to do is just keep dunking craig in the water oh yeah you get to navigate your uh like play fighting in the water (laughs) yeah um and then eventually, uh, they are, uh, jumping off of the, um, like, I guess the top of the waterfall where the r- rocks are. And I was actually reading just beforehand, there's a, a secret, a, uh, ending slash achievement that you can get at this one where you just fucking die. I got that one. Yeah, you keep jumping off the waterfall <laughs> until you die. Uh, it's really, really, really dark. It's real, real dark. <laughs> yeah. So I, lo- I looked it up beforehand because I'm like, what is that? Like, surely you don't, like, just die. No, you you slip and knock your head and you're in a pool of blood. Wait a minute. It's it's not like a, it's not a joke ending. It's like an actual real deal. You slip and die ending. Yes. Well, it's, it's like a joke ending. It, well, yeah, it's both. 
Yeah, it, like, here's the deal. Yeah, your death is described in way more gory detail than you would have expected. Like, about your broken body and things like that. Not, like, crazy, but, like, you know, not, like, super intense, but, like, yeah. But when it's over, the game over screen is the Dark Souls font with that red, and it says, you died, there's a picture of, like, ripped up sneakers, and then you water fell to your death. <laughs> so it's, like, it's a good joke, because, yeah, they get really grim, and you're like, holy crap, and then they do that, and it's just like, nah, just screwing with you, we're still Dream Daddy, you know. And they just kick you right back to uh, the middle of the date with the jumping, and then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm tired of jumping. Yeah. Okay, because I thought you would have had to go back through the game. That's a little bit better than you can just treat it as, like, a fake. I thought it would give you a non-standard game over. It does. I, I posted a picture of it. Yeah, it, it 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 does, but it doesn't. It doesn't like. There's no repercussions to your run. It doesn't like actually game over for you. I guess is what he's saying. And it's an achievement. You get an achievement for for dying from cannonballs. <laughs> you just you lose one of your lives. Yeah. <laughs> um. So let's see what else happened after that. Um. Well, then you get back. You walk back with wet clothes, because even though you took off your clothes, your clothes still got wet, because you cannonball 5,000 times. And so they, I think they want to uh, dry them off by the fire, but they can't start a fire because they forgot a uh, lighter. So, uh, they, I don't think they really describe how they do the, um, how they light the fire, but I guess it's sort of like the Boy Scout way, uh, rubbing a uh, stick on another stick. Kind of thing. Yeah, it's more... They kind of allude to the fact that, like... Well, I mean, they, they talk about it. Like, Craig just knows what he's doing, and they keep trying, and eventually they start a fire. Yeah. And we give moral support. Yes. Yeah, our dad does not know how to start a fire. <laughs> but we, we... The the choice you make is to go overboard with compliments, and you just, like, tell him he's great while he starts this fire. Yeah. Or just, you know, You're doing really good, and also your body is great. That sort of type of thing. It's like... Oh, we can't start a fire. I guess we'll have to do it the hard way. Oh, yeah. We talked about the butt tree, but we didn't talk about right when you first... We do, yeah. And Craig catches us looking at his butt. Yeah, another choice you make is to look at his butt. And he's like, it's a nice butt. <laughs> but in the meantime, so... And also, like, there's a moment while they're starting the fire that's like, man, you guys really fucked up. Like, you're like, it's cold now. Like, the sun's set. You're both soaking wet. Like... <laughs> Wolves are howling in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> the fog is creeping in. I'm cold and there are wolves coming. This is the sexiest Bloodborne mod I've ever <laughs> seen. Um, but, like, yeah, so Craig gets the fire going. And then, like, uh, it's this is another... This is interesting because, like, Craig kind of went into this whole... Like, they, they're kind of, like, once they get the fire started, they're still in their underwear with, like, those fold-out chairs you sit while you watch the game. And I guess they're just talking and, like, kind of, you know... And Craig is like, what does he say? He's like, there's this, he always feels like he needs to do more and like, he needs to be a better father and he needs to exercise so he'll be healthy and he can live long for, uh, River and, uh, Hazel and, uh, Margaret or whatever the fuck. And, uh, I forgot her name. Briar. Um, yeah. And like how he can't just like relax and let it go. It's like, he feels guilty if he's not constantly moving like a shark. And he like, he doesn't do anything for him. I think we even, like, ask him, like, do you, can you even do anything for yourself? Yep. So, I, I related a lot to this, except what I think Craig should do is, like, psych, like, so. Double down on it. Like, yes, and if you're, but incorporate a thing you like, like, do streaming. That way, you're working, but it's also, for, like, something you like. And then when you burn out, you had some fun while you burned out. <laughs> And the kids will bring in the extra bits and... Oh my god. Yeah! I really like in this, how, like, the implication, which they they never say the implication, but the implication is that you're trying to convince Craig that, like, hey, you doing something for you is going to pay off long-term for your kids. But you never actually tell him that because it seems like a... It's, it, that's preachy to say that to somebody? I, I almost was like, Craig, you're going to have a heart attack no matter... From <laughs> stress. Now, you're in great health, but you're... You're going to fucking beef it at some point if you don't chill out seriously but like you you just you're just positive with craig which is a good thing to think you like you're not gonna preach it to this guy you're not gonna tell him how to live his life but you're just like no you just need to take time because you know you're a good person and you're great with these kids and you're gonna be fine 
and then the sun goes down, and we get into the tent, and oh, oh no, another oopsie. Slow, how could you? This, this is not an accident. Um, like uh, we forgot an extra sleeping bag. Shit. Oh no. And then Craig's like, "Don't worry, bro. We could, we'll spread it out. And we'll sleep. We'll sleep on it." So we're sleeping in the tent, but it's cold. And maybe we nuzzle up to Craig? First they're sleeping, like, back to back, and, in, like, in the most no-homo way that two very <laughs> homo dudes could be. Uh, and, and then they cuddle up on each other, yeah. And he kiss? And he goes, bro, I got, feeling, I got feelings, bro, and I can't deny them anymore, I think. You're like, me too, bro. I, all I wrote down is that we respond, yeah, bro, ellipsis, me too, which is fucking yeah. hilarious. <laughs> I like how we adopt Craig's terminology. We're like, yeah, bro, I feel you, just because you're like, this is the language of love for this man. That, that was just too much for me. I'm like, can, can we can we chill with the bros? <laughs> bro, let's chill. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> and then it fades to black, so, you know, write your own ending. So you die again. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I, I I I forgot the sleeping bag, but I remembered the condoms. Oh my god! Somehow, what you don't? I think Dream Daddy isn't to safe sex. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um. So we after after we fuck Craig in a tent in the woods. Uh, it fast forwards to Amanda's <laughs> graduation party. That's a hell of a segue. <laughs> I, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You you gave me that, like, like that, oh, man, thing when I mentioned the condoms, and then now we fuck Craig in the woods. I know. That's my, it's just called a joke. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm a dad. I don't get them. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So, the graduation party. Um, so, we're like, oh, Amanda, you know, we got you a present, um, for, you know, because you graduated. Yeah, all the dads in the neighborhood come. Wait, 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 phrasing on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, before that, it's a surprise. So before that, what what present did we get our daughter? Uh, oh, shit. I'm a terrible dad, I forgot. We got her the box DVD set of one of the crappy history shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> if there's one thing a college student needs, it's 19 DVDs. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> That'll take up a quarter of your dorm room. <laughs> so she's got the DVD box set of that Paranormal Ice Road Truckers show. And we take her out in the backyard. And surprise, the whole neighborhood is here to celebrate. Um, and there's like a really awkward moment where all the dad sprites come in at once around Amanda, and it's really uncomfortable, because <laughs> they're so much taller than her. It looks like a fight or something. I don't know. Yeah, I was terrified. I I'm saying just for me, like, visually, in front of the screen, all these dads suddenly surround you, and it's just like, oh, shit, what happened? And then it says, you died. And, uh... But we got a whole we got a whole party set up. There's a there's a macaroni and cheese bar, and she's like, "What?" And it's a whole a whole mac and cheese bar and uh, food and cake and stuff like that. And um, everybody we say hi to everybody. I'm sure they say different stuff depending on how well you know them. You know, at the end, um, Hugo talks to you about uh, he's being uh, glad that Amanda got into her the college she runs right. Mm -hmm. So it's nice, and uh, then goofy stuff happens. Amanda, is, oh, so Amanda interacts with Briar and Hazel, obviously because we're on the Craig route, and she's still trying to get Briar and Hazel to unlock their psychic twin abilities. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh yeah, so she asks them what uh, one to think of a shape, and the other one, and it was like square and star. Yeah, it's very Ghostbusters. They could could have could have just lied and said, "Yep, that was the one I was thinking of." You got it. But they didn't, which is great. <laughs> and uh, and then we turn to like a, the other half of our backyard, and it's a fucking immaculate sakura tree uh, with a, like a, a bench <laughs> under it, <laughs> <laughs> and petals falling, and like a little bit of water, and like it's so funny. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the the most romantic setting is the other half of our backyard. It doesn't look like a maple at all. Maybe that's the reason they moved, that they had just 
this fantastic backyard and this house is on sale for the first time in years. <laughs> like we, Amanda, we have to, we can't pass up this opportunity. You can't see it from the picture, but if you go behind the other side, there's a perfect butt there. Perfect butt on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see that, though, because, like, yeah, we could be like, yeah, I don't know about this house. The realtor's like, wait till you see this. Like, and, and then it's a buyer's market. Yeah, and you're like, I know you're, you know, I know it's senior year and you shouldn't move, but I can't, I mean, we can't pass this up. This is our dream home. Our, it, and there's our dream realtor, a.k.a. the sequel. <laughs> god. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit, wait a minute. Oh, I gotta get on Kickstarter. <laughs> so we have a moment with so Craig Craig appears and and we talk to him and uh, we hang out on the on the bench under the romance tree and uh, we talk about um, take like I, all I wrote down is being your bro means forcing you to take care of yourself <laughs> and they're best bros and uh, and I think they kiss and then uh, you, that's that's the end you get a nice. Uh, Get a nice CG of Craig, like getting Gatorade splashed on him or something like that. Yeah, it's like uh, I guess kind of like a like it's like a, the cheesecake. I don't know what they call that in like dating sims or whatever, but it's just like one of those. And uh, you know, they're they're drawings, but they're not that cheesecakey. He's just got his shirt off. He's not like in a sexy pose or anything like that. It's just kind of like a fun picture. Yeah, it's just a nice picture. Oh, sure. I mean. It's yeah. I don't mean he's like you know, hey boys or anything, but like you know, I, I think it's supposed to be a little sexy. Yeah, he's like they have they have a little nip slip there, and he's in the shortest shorts <laughs> you can have. <laughs> and uh, and so that that ends our our story with Craig, but uh, clearly it's the the beginning of their relationship. Also, based on the Gatorade, I would I would assume that uh, they you know they win state or something like that. <laughs> I mean, no one's on the field, so... No. Or one of the moms is kind of like, I just want to see this dude covered in Gatorade. That's, <laughs> that's my that's my weird face. <laughs> Got a boyfriend, leave me alone. No. Oh, uh, God, I bet they never leave him alone, too, no. after they start dating. Probably not. Aww. Um, so that's Craig's route, so... We discussed beforehand of who we want to go for next, and it's Matt. It's Matt! We like him, you like him. So for the next episode, uh, read the intro and go on your first date with Matt. Yep. Uh, Everybody still liking Dream Daddy? Yeah. I am enjoying the writing. Oh, it's really, really clever and sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Good stuff. It's so endearing. And I like Craig. I, I I like that they're so I like how positive he is and like he's not you know he has uh, depth to him he's not like totally one dimensional like positive guy but he's kind of also like the the childhood friend right like that's a a, a a otome stereotype so I like that that is done here too uh, but in a different way uh, it's very it's it's endearing is this like like in a normal dating well, there. Yeah, I guess so. In a, in a typical dating sim, I guess. Like, is, so Craig would be kind of the person you unlock at the end, sort of? Is that how that goes? No, he would be one of the first ones. Like, the default, oh. one of the default things. Yeah, because childhood friend is, like, that's, that's like, the person you talk to the most or whatever. And then, yeah, that's that one. Stereotype. You like how I covered it up like I've never played a dating sim? Like, <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, tell me how that works. <sighs> And, uh, yeah, so I, I think I think Matt is, an, is another good option because he just seems like a nice guy. He has a good relationship with his kid. Like, it's another kind of, like, uncomplicated route so we can, like, slowly get into it more and more. Yeah. I will say I, I played ahead. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the first date with Matt. I think it's fun and I'm excited to talk about it. And I'm excited for you, the listener, to, <laughs> to enjoy it as well. Yeah, I like I like any any uh, dating game where through the date scene like the date scenes where um, you know it makes you it makes you feel nice and like some of them are like oh this is sweet and like these characters are sweet together um, but also there's a lot of lines in there that are just like oh like it really like 
it makes it makes you feel happy to to see it and like to um ha- watch the chemistry between between these two characters as well. And I any you know a lot of a lot of games do it, but I always really like that feeling of where you feel like you know oh it's really sweet they really like each other and it's not just like you know oh I can't I can't resist my feelings for you anymore yeah <laughs> this is true love Bro. we're just adults that have. You know, actually like people. Yeah, we're like adults, and we like each other, and yeah. Yeah, and it's another sign of, like, really good writing. Like, it is difficult to find the balance between, like, that overly overly saccharine, like, over-the-top kind of, like, oh, everything's positive, and also, like, you know, getting getting melodramatic about too much, you know, drama going on. Like, this, to find that healthy balance between those two things is really hard. That isn't, otherwise, lots of games would do it, but this game does it well. And you know what I also like about this game is that there just isn't that much, I don't think there's hardly any uh, romance media that the characters are in this age group. Like, I guess they're kind of between 30 and 40, I guess. Um, maybe some of them could be in their early 40s. I think 40 is just fair. Like, it's, it's, it, yeah, because a couple, I think Amanda's the oldest, right? I know Matt's daughter is a little older, but I don't think she's Amanda's age. I can't think if we met Robert's kids. No. Uh, have we? No. We'll, we'll probably have to do his route to do that. I have a prediction there. But, um, so, like, uh, no, I, um, yeah, I guess, like, I mean, youngest, whatever, not literally youngest, but probably, yeah, like, probably, like, third, like, late 30s, early 40s. Yeah, and, and I feel like that, I mean, what, what game focuses on people in their late 30s and early 40s, right? Like... It's it's really nice and uh, and I like the the feeling of it where everybody is experienced you know everybody's been in relationships obviously everybody has children like it's a it's a different level um, and it's really nice to to see where it's not like everybody's fucking first love at sixteen end of the world kind of thing right. Yeah, and you know it's funny because like it, it it's, in, it's sort of interesting when you, especially when you first hear about this game and you're not sure exactly what direction they they're gonna go with it. I think we maybe talked about this last week, so it's it's very neat like the way they did it. Like I think it's like not the first thing you'd think of with Dream Daddy, even if you were to make a game like that. So it's like it's nice that it's just played it's played like it's played straight, and then like it's it is what it is. Well, not not too straight. Right, right, right. <laughs> I wish there was, a, there was, like, some fancy term I can't think of there that I have to explain later, but whatever. Um, it's taken seriously, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's taken seriously. Um, yeah, good stuff. So, all right. Well, in that case, I guess we'll uh, see you next time. Yeah, see you next time for Matt's round. All right, everybody. Later. <laughs>